and five days today. I am doing this video just a tad bit late because I wanted to wait until my midwife appointment so that way I could update you guys, have just a little bit more to talk about this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the symptoms this week. I feel like I'm stuck in the middle between having like first trimester symptoms and having third trimester symptoms. Even, even though I'm not in the first nor the third trimester, I should be having like a perfectly happy time right now. Like second trimester is usually when things are just like smooth sailing, but this pregnancy has has just been the worst on my body. I don't think that's a secret. I'm already starting to get those third trimester, like super uncomfortable symptoms. The main thing that I noticed this week that has been different is that I have started getting that pinched cervix feeling and I've talked about that through all of my pregnancies. I don't know if everybody gets that sensation, but I definitely do with all my pregnancies. So that one's not just this pregnancy, but I do feel like I'm getting it earlier this pregnancy than I did in the past. I'm not sure. I would have to go back and watch my videos to know for sure, but it hit me one day and I was like, something happened. I, don't, I did something and it just got that painful feeling like in my cervix. It is like the, it's so hard to explain. It just feels like your cervix is being pinched. It's very uncomfortable. It's like a sharp discomfort feeling. And since then I have felt it a few other times after that. So that's not fun. Also this week I have been noticing, I have been having some Braxton Hicks contractions and it's just completely sporadic. I'll have like one, one day and then like two another day, random times during the day, never any consistency, completely normal, not something to be worried about. But it's just something that I have noticed. I'll be sitting there and my stomach gets really hard and tense and I'm like, oh, but am I having a contraction? And obviously since I am getting significantly bigger, my stomach is just like getting in the way of everything. I just don't know how I can get any bigger. And people were pointing out, people that have watched my past videos with my past pregnancies, because I've always obviously documented every week or pretty much every week of all my pregnancies. And I am measuring significantly bigger this pregnancy. I think I'm measuring about equal to what I was with the twins. So that's definitely not fun. And with that, since I'm like so massively big, I have gotten to the point where I will do anything in my power to make sure I don't have to bend over. <laughs> like if I drop my keys, I'll be like, Lilia, can you please pick up my keys for me? Like, that's why you have other kids, right? Is so they can help you with that stuff. If I have to bend over, I feel like the whole world is moving with me <laughs> and to get back up is borderline impossible. But oftentimes I have some child in my hand here and then I have obviously the child here too. So I drop something and I'm like, who? Like literally I sound like that when I'm doing it too. It's very embarrassing. So I avoid at all costs bending over if I like drop something and pick something up. However, I do have like long toes. This is probably gonna be like the weirdest thing you've ever heard. I have like pretty decently long toes and I will pick things up with my toes. Is that gross? Not if it's like food or something that like shouldn't be touching feet, but if I like drop my keys and 99% of the time I'm wearing sandals, I'll just like pick it up with my foot and then like grab it like that. Like that's how desperate I am to not bend over at this point. Another thing that I've been noticing this week is that the baby really enjoys having dance parties with my bladder. I constantly feel like I have to pee and I'll be perfectly fine one second and the baby will wake up and start like moving all crazy and I'll like have a sudden urge. Like I will almost pee myself out of nowhere. I just feel like I have to pee so bad. And then when I actually go to pee, it's really not that much. It's just that the baby is kicking my bladder or using it as a punching bag. I'm not exactly sure what's happening in there, but I don't like it. <laughs> Another thing that I've noticed just these past few days mostly, not necessarily this whole week, but these past few days I've been having really bad heartburn. And I don't know if it's like just stuff that I've been eating maybe. My diet hasn't really changed, so I don't know if it's just like something that I've eaten or if it's just the pregnancy. They do say that the more heartburn you have, the more likely your child is to have um, a lot of hair, but that is not always necessarily the truth. I know there is some like scientific evidence behind that. However, I've had a lot of heartburn with a lot of my pregnancies and pretty much all of my babies were bald, or pretty bald anyway. All of them had hair, but it was all like peach fuzz hair. None of my kids were born with like a full head of hair and I don't expect this one to. <laughs> so moving on to my midwife appointment that I had. She did a home visit this week. We have completely paid her off now, so that is exciting. Depending on what state you're in, what area you're in, what insurance you have, a lot of health insurances don't cover midwife expenses. So we do have to pay for her out of pocket, but in my 
my opinion, it, it is so, so, so worth it, especially depending on your co-pays and how much you're paying, like how much your deductibles are and stuff like that. I really don't feel like we're paying that much more than we would be if we did the hospital birth. Like every day that you stay in the hospital and every drug that you take and every like every visit you go in, like every time they check you and every time you go into the doctor's visit, like you have to pay for all those things too. In total for our midwife, and I don't know if this is like the same everywhere, but to hire her for your entire pregnancy, obviously all of your delivery, postpartum care and baby care for six weeks after, it ranges from 32 to 3800 depending on a couple different factors. So overall, it is pretty cheap. And you just have to be paid off by your 36th or 37th week. So we are, we're just a little bit ahead. We just wanted to like get over with, be done with that. And we are starting to look into getting a birthing pool because I definitely want to have another water birth. I know I've gotten a lot of questions about if I want to do another water birth. Obviously, I am doing the home birth regardless. Well, I mean, hopefully I'm doing the home birth regardless unless something is wrong. I have no problem going to the hospital, but I am planning on having a home birth. As far as the water birth goes, I loved, loved, loved my water birth with Landon. I would do it a million times over. So I'm definitely planning on having a water birth. However, I know sometimes things just don't go as planned. Sometimes you end up on the bed or on the toilet or on a chair somewhere. So it kind of just depends on what my body wants me to do at the time. But we are going to purchase a, a birthing pool and we are planning on using it for the birth of this baby also. This was my last four week visit with my midwife. Midwives are generally the same as OBGYNs. You see them every four weeks until you hit 30-ish weeks and then you start going every two weeks. So my next visit is going to be at 30 weeks, four weeks from today, and then it's gonna start going to two week visits, which is like, exciting and nerve-wracking because it's just like oh my god it's happening like I can't believe I just keep saying that this whole pregnancy you guys are probably so sick of me saying of hearing me say that but I just feel like this pregnancy is flying by and I can't believe it's already going to be getting down to the two-week visits that's just crazy to me and the good thing is as horrible as I'm feeling after my, my midwife appointment today she did assure me that everything medically for me and the baby is perfectly healthy perfectly normal the baby is growing exactly the way that it's supposed to I'm measuring exactly how far along I am I'm not measuring too big I'm not gaining too much weight although I feel like crap my body really is handling the pregnancy um, the way that it is supposed to. The varicose veins suck and the muscle separation sucks and all that stuff, but my body is carrying this baby perfectly fine. Everything is perfectly healthy. Everything is just A-OK, -okay, and that is good to hear. Also, she did tell me that baby is face up. The baby is posterior, which hopefully that changes because that does lead to a harder labor and possibly delivery, but I have a long time for that to happen. I feel all the little limbs and stuff up here, which explains a lot. Baby is posterior and the baby is head down, so that's good too. And the baby's been head down since my last visit. Now that it's getting bigger and gaining weight, hopefully it doesn't change. It, it still can change. The baby still can flip at this point, but it's very unlikely. So I think that is actually pretty much all that we really talked about at this appointment. Not too much happened. We were talking about like due date possibilities. Both my midwife and I are kind of just expecting that I'm gonna go over. She's like, I look at my calendar and I pretty much just bank on you being like November 20th because my actual due date is November 13th. So both her and I agree that the chances of me going early are unlikely and the chances of me being on time even are slightly unlikely. We're just preparing ourselves to go over. We're thinking it's probably gonna be really close to Thanksgiving. With the due date that I have, it is very possible for me to have this baby anywhere from Halloween to Thanksgiving. I think Halloween would be two weeks early and Thanksgiving would be two weeks late. I don't know if I should like get a costume for the kid. I guess I'll just see like how I'm feeling up to that point. Like if I feel like I'm gonna go soon. I don't know. It's obviously way too early to tell now. And as we get closer and she like checks to see if I'm dilated and stuff, then we can kind of like go from there. You cannot have a home birth if you go into labor before 37 weeks or if you are over 42 weeks. So I pretty much have like five weeks to get it together and get the thing out, which should be plenty of time. And like 99% of women go between 37 and 
42 weeks, so shouldn't be a problem. But we were getting to a point where we were starting to worry with Landon because I was 41 weeks in one day. I was like not dilated at all. My body was showing no signs of delivery at that point. And I remember it just happened. I had a midwife appointment that morning and I was like, little to no dilation and then I had him that night so I mean things can just be so different maybe I will go early you just you really never know but I just feel like I'm probably gonna go over based off of my history with Lilia I had her on her due date exactly with the twins I made it to almost 39 weeks so that's like practically overdue with twins and then Landon I was 41 weeks in one day so I just feel like I'm more likely to go later than I am earlier I have gained just about 10-ish pounds at this point. I think I finally did hit 160, so, and I started at 150. So I think that is actually it that we talked about. I didn't really talk about anything else that was that, like, important or event eventful, like something I could update about on a vlog. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys my 26 week belly. All right, I did just eat lunch too, so I feel like even bigger than I normally do. I don't know if that like technically matters. Here is with the shirt on. And here is with the shirt up. See, I am measuring at forty and a half. Just about 40 and a half. I don't know if my other tape measure. I'm actually curious to see if this tape measure measures the same because I feel like I was measuring bigger with this one. Let me see. Moment of truth, y'all. Look at that. Oh my gosh. These freaking tape measures are off. Dang it. Well, I'm not sure which one I should go by. I think I started with the pink one. So let's just go with the pink ones measurement because this one is saying I'm measuring at 41 but since the beginning of this pregnancy I was using this one and this one says I'm measuring at 40 and a half. I'm just gonna try to stick with this one for the rest of the pregnancy <laughs> that way we don't have any confusion. Well that certainly explains a lot because I was using the yellow one for the past few weeks and I was wondering why I got so like tremendously big. Apparently it measures like a half inch bigger. Man, these freaking things from China. So anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I will have those links below. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all, and if not, I will talk to you guys next week for week 27. Bye. You guys are going to need to get two shots, okay? I know. I know.